Hey, hey, Fit Fam. Sky Hanley here from Limitless Health Co. and the Fitness Business Club wanting to bring you this uh, amazing little video on the Ultimate Sales Blueprint. Um, now, why I'm bringing you this video today is because I actually went and tried, uh, I was about to say tried out a new gym. That's not quite right. I went and had a good look around a, um, a new gym today. Um, I'm someone who actually uh, really enjoys gym jumping. I know that sounds really weird, but when we, when I, when you work in the industry in the way that I do, which is obviously to help build out impactful challenges, um, which is to help uh, personal training um, businesses grow their business, grow their offerings, you know, and make real impact in people's lives, um, as well as being able to, um, you know, live the life that you want to live as well. It's okay to want to help people. We also want to make a little bit of money and the more money we have, the more people we can help. So talking about sales and talking about, um, you know, money and, and making money in our businesses isn't meant to be a dirty thing. Um, it's so important that we're tracking, you know, tracking our sales, tracking our figures, having some understanding of, um, you know, things like our conversions rate, conversion rates, excuse me, within the fitness industry. That's really important. Um, and so, you know, I thought, oh my goodness, what a great opportunity. You know, I'm popping into this gym today. Um, it is, a, you know, it was a very standard kind of gym. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. Um, and I thought they're going to have a sales process in place. And I'm really curious, you know, um, as to how they go and how they take me through that process and and um, you know and any little bits of um, download and stuff like that I can see people popping in hi Robert how are you um, so look let's get into it okay um, what I'm gonna tell you about today is obviously um, uh, the ultimate sales blueprint so what we need to know um, there's a lot of fashionable things out there you know and, and I'm on the same boat of you know sell without selling yes that is true but at the same time isn't life much better when we have a little bit of structure to things? <laughs> like, you know, don't you want to have some structure around the stuff that you're doing so that you can recreate, um, you know, uh, the process, you know, time and time and time again, um, because that's how you're going to grow your business and, and in, a, in a really impactful way. And as I said, make more money and the more money we have, the more people we're able to help, whether that be simply your family um, or, you know, other people, uh, you know, clients and your tribe and community and all the rest of it. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience. As I said, um, uh, I'll tell you what went well this morning and maybe what went not so well. Um, and then at the end um, of this video, it's not going to be a huge video, but at the end, I'm actually going to tell you about um, a really great opportunity I have coming up. I would love for you guys to... Um, uh, you know, stick around definitely until then um, because, uh, yeah, if I can... Um, you know, the way that I look at, um, you know, what it is that I do is that your success is my success too. So again, the more people that I'm able to help, um, the more trainers that I'm able to help um, amplify their businesses, then the more, um, you know, everyday human beings I'm able to help as well. All right. So um, I'm really proud to be able to do that. So I want you to stick around to the end, um, you know, and, and I'll tell you about a really cool, um, exciting announcement and opportunity that's normally for only my VIPs, um, but uh, I'm putting it here in the fitness business club as well. So let's talk about sales. Now, uh, the first thing, um, I've got my little triangle down here. All right. Let's have a look at this. Boom. So if you see me look down, it's just I'm remembering exactly where we are in the process for one second. I'm going to post this or let me know if you want me to post this. Um, this is the my sales blueprint, all right? Um, my ultimate sales blueprint. So if you want to have a really nice structured way to be able to take somebody through a sale, yes, without selling, um, and we're going to talk about that in a second, um, just let me know in the comments and I'll post this picture um, into the group later on. So you can just have a little bit of a look, um, rehash it with the information I'm about to talk with now. So step one, build rapport. You've probably heard that before, but the thing is for some people, we really like, you really have to think about it, you know, because you've all heard the saying, you know, we want to know, like, and trust someone. All right. And that's, that's very sales language and business language and whatever. But what it actually simply means is just talk to people, you know, we're in a caring industry and we're generally pretty empathetic people. Ask somebody about their day. You know, if you're, if somebody's coming to the gym or somebody's coming to your garage or somebody's coming to your studio or somebody's coming to your box, it doesn't matter. You know, somebody's coming to the park you train out of. The first thing you want to do is be like, Hey, how's it going? How's your day been? Because even just asking them something as simple as that gives you 
insight into where they're at. You know, like if you sit down and somebody goes, oh gosh, you know, how's your day been? And you're like, far out, I've been rushing around. Like it's been totally crazy. I so don't have much time to be here. You know, da 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 da. It gives you insight into their, um, their, their brain at that point in time, where they might be at in their energy, where their focus might be, you know, so that you can be the conductor of the energy uh, within that time period. Does that make sense? So that you can sort of go, okay, cool. Wow, it sounds like you've had a really busy day. That's crazy. I had a day like that last week week you know if that's true like I'm not saying make things up um but you know man like last Monday was totally crazy for me I reckon I did like a 15 hour day I had to be in like 30 places at once don't you hate it when that kind of thing happens you know when's the next time you actually get to have a bit of a chill moment and they'll go oh gosh on Wednesday I'm gonna go get a manicure and pedicure or whatever it is all right so already you know you're showing that you've listened to what it is that they've said you're relaying it back to them is kind of the psychology of it which then tells them that that you've heard what they said. And you're also going, hey, me too. You know, like, yeah, I have days like that as well. Like, you know, and and it's that building rapport, building that relationship, um, you know, through s- simple things just like that. So we say, yeah, no like and trust, and this is the sales process and ultimate blueprint and blah, blah, blah. It's as simple as asking somebody how their day is. You know, how's your day been? What have you been up to? You know, um, what do you do for um, what do you do for a living? Oh, so have you got the day off today? Just simple questions. We're in an empathetic industry. For the most part, you should probably care about people, and I know you do. So asking them questions is almost second nature. I just think that some Sometimes when it's like, okay, I've got to sell something now, what happens is, um, you know, maybe us as trainers, you know, people who aren't necessarily as trained in um, in business, in the industry, in sales, in, you know, marketing and all the different things, we go into deer in the headlights mode, don't we? So you sort of go, hello, how are you? <laughs> you know, cool, that's good. All right, look, come over here. We'll just sit down for a second. I'll tell you about the pricing. Ugh, cringe, 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 all right? So we don't want to do that, you know? Just start by talking to someone, just see where they're at, um, you know, conduct the energy um, of the room between the two of you, see if you can meet them where their energy's at as well. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about that today. So the girl that I actually, um, I went into the gym, I had just um, completed a yoga class, so I was pretty mellow, hey? I came out of yoga, I was pretty mellow, I had to jump on my phone and do a few things, you know, to answer some questions and all the usual sort of stuff, so I was a bit in my own head if that makes sense I was going into the gym and I was really curious for this process um, uh, but my energy was maybe different to how it is like right now let's say and this girl was very um, um, bless her Gen Y <laughs> you know um, and and was bubbly but kind of um, um, bubbly but with a little attitude if that makes sense that sounds really awful I don't mean an a-hole attitude but she was just very bubbly and very kind of telling me things and so I was like okay really odd energy right now you know um and whatever so that was a strange experience already off the bat what you want to do is maybe not that (laughs) you know if you've got a mellow person and say I was probably mellow this morning and I'm not normally a mellow person as you would know um you know, you want to try and meet them a bit more where they're at. It's called mirroring, all right? And mirroring is a really amazing psychological tool. It's not to play someone against themselves, if that makes sense. Like, it's, we're not trying to trick people here. But you want to go, okay, cool. Oh, you've had a bit of a, you know, chill day. Yeah, right. You know, you don't want to come at them maybe as, as bubbly and energetic and, you know, full on. Um, and I'm a full on person. So again, even I have to mind myself and, and check in on how other people are doing and maybe bring my um, intensity level down and things like that. Why you want to do that when you're trying to build rapport is, again, it's a psychological sign that we are the same. We're really similar people. Yeah, I just so chill, man. I had a crazy day like that as well. Sometimes when we meet people at different energy levels, um, it, again, it can throw things out of whack in terms of that, you know, no like and trust. Do I trust you? I don't know that I trust you. You're really different to me and you're coming at me with a whole bunch of, you know, like all that kind of thing, all right? Um, so we just want to moderate. We want to mirror the person a little bit. And if we can, once we've sort of met them at their level, not if they're being negative or weird or I don't know, whatever else, um, but you can sort of start to lift things then and turn things around. And what actually happens, like there are so many studies on this, is that that person will actually start to change as well and they will be brought, um, you know, to a different level. All right. So in that um, building rapport phase, you know, know, like and trust. Um, uh, as I said, ask lots of questions and make sure that um, you're mirroring um, their energy and that you're just referring um, some of the things that they're saying back to them. Um, 
so that they can hear that you're hearing them. All right, it's super, super important. Don't just fire out a bunch of questions and then like, like, okay, cool. Yes or no answer, yes or no answer, yes or no answer. And then don't actually do anything from there. That would be crazy. All right, find the need. So the next step after we've built rapport is find the need. Now, the important thing here is that there are three places that are actually important here, all right? Where someone's at now, where they wanna be, and the other one, and <laughs> what's stopping them from getting there. All right, so where they are now, where they wanna be, and what's stopping them from getting there. They are the three important things, okay? They are not only important for them, they are important for us as well, okay? And I think you kind of um, probably know that, you know, because obviously if somebody's coming to you and they want training, whether you're a boot camp, whether you're in the park, whether you're at a gym, you know, whatever it is, it's important to us as empathetic people, as, um, as service providers, to know what it is that somebody, you know, wants out of our product, where they are now, and why they haven't potentially been achieving their goals. That's really important. That gives us so much information, all right? So we want to find that need, okay? Why are you here? What are you doing? You know, whatever else it might be, asking those questions, finding out where they are now, where they want to be, uh, and um, the other, where is my brain? <laughs> and why they aren't there now. Oh my goodness. Apparently my brain is not here now with you guys. Um, so they're really important things, all right? And I'm actually going to tell you a little bit about um, my journey with that today, um, uh, a little bit towards the end when I tell you about uh, my experience of this morning. Now, the next thing is, once you know where people are at now, where they want to be, what's stopping them, we have that information, we can absolutely relate to them, um, and then we can build value around our service and even ourselves, you know? I know there are a lot of trainers out there who are a bit unsure themselves sometimes not so confident and things like that a lot of you guys message me and and um, and let me know where you're at with your mindset and how you're thinking and I understand that and that's not to say that we're not confident people in life or that we don't have the skills it's just sometimes being out in the business world can be lonely right because you're running your own business you know you're having to do all the bits and pieces you're confident about exercise you know that you can help people however you know deer in the headlights in the sales process or don't want to feel like you're being forceful by, you know, talking to somebody about, you know, how it is that your product can help them. But they're all really important things. So where we know when we know where somebody wants to be, uh, we can build the value around how we can help them get there. All right. Oh my goodness, you want to lose weight. That's fantastic. Not fantastic that you want to lose weight, but I can definitely help you with that. That's amazing. So um, I was actually once 30 kilos heavier myself and I did all these small things, um, you know, at a time until the small things made for a huge result. And I made this massive impact in my life and look at where I am, you know, all these years down the track. Gosh, what is the thing that, you know, you're struggling with the most? Um, you know, you just said where what's been holding you back, um, you know, that you're finding it hard uh, to find the time, wow, I was really like that as well. But you know what I did? I stopped going out with my friends as much on the weekend or, or you know, doing as many other activities um, uh, through the week so that I could find that time to focus on myself because I thought, you know what? I'm actually the most important thing here. Now, all of that is actually a whole bunch of truth, right? Like that's actually part of my story and my journey. And the thing is, if I'm talking to somebody about, um, you know, weight loss or whatever else it might be, I'm sure there is something, and the same for you, there's something in your story, your journey, your life that you're going to be able to relate back to them so that they, um, so that they can feel the value in what it is that you have to offer. You know what it is that I offer? I offer the understanding because I've been there before too. And they go, oh my goodness, you've been there before. That's amazing, you know. Hi there. Hi, Anita. Um, so that's why we need to know where they want to be, where they are now and what's been getting in their way so that we can then connect the dots between the service that we have. Because at the end of the day, I know that everyone who's watching this, you know, whether it's now or back later on, you are all amazing trainers. It's just that simple. You know what to do. You know how to affect change in people's lives. You know how to help people. You are empathetic. All right. Where we get stuck, as I said, in, in terms of sales is then being able to translate that, you know, whether it be in marketing copy, whether that be when we're talking to people, whether that be social media posts, whatever, 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 um, we get stuck sometimes in building around the value. We get very stuck in the features, okay? So features are like, I run 10 classes a week that start at 7 a.m. in the morning until, you know, uh, 7 o'clock at night and you can come to any of them. 
cool. <laughs> like, you know, that's a feature. That's a feature of your business. Cool, no worries. You know, that's not a benefit. And clients want to hear about the benefit to them. All right. The rest of it, yes, it's important and they may need to know that at some point in time, but when we're talking about the sales process, it's about building the rapport, um, it's about finding the need, building the value around the need um, to then create uh, the desire. All right, so once they're like, oh my goodness, you can help me with my weight loss because you totally understand because you've been there before and here you are as the example and you're telling me all these amazing things and whatever else it might be, the benefit it's been to your life and you said that you ran out of time and I, don't, I can't find any time either and ah, you know, you'll know how to impact my life. All right, it's building that desire in, in the product, in the service, in whatever without going into features, which is... What we sometimes do as business people, our business head says, here is the list of things you'll get for this challenge, you know, but people don't need to know what they get. What they actually want to know is what benefit those things are to them. How is it going to impact their life? How is it going to change their life for the better? How is it going to step them closer to their goals? All right. You want to build that desire. Um, once we've built the desire, um, uh, then the next thing is overcoming objections. Overcoming objections is a... That's a lesson of its own, all right? And again, it's not about, um... let me stop for one second and reverse. So 15 years ago, my first fitness um, industry job was that I was a, um, a membership consultant uh, at Fitness First. And this was back in the like kind of rogue days of the fitness industry where selling was freaking hardcore, right? Like we would have our, um, you know, list of people like I'm the reason I was there, you know, I am one of the reasons, actually I wasn't that bad. However, you know, I'm one of the reasons why people are really scared of membership consultants standing in, you know, um, in shopping centers when you walk past, right? Um, because you know, you're going to get like, if you say, if you even make eye contact, don't fucking make eye contact because you know, us membership consultants, we are on you. Like what's the saying? Like a cheater on a gazelle. Like I'm fucking on you. Right. Um, that was us back in the day, 15 years ago, it was pretty like hardcore because it was really masculine selling techniques for something that, that, you know, most of our clients are actually probably females wanting to lose weight. And we were using these really masculine techniques um, of hardcore selling, probably from corporate industry, um, to sell something that's actually really empathetic and, uh, excuse me, really um, uh, like so personal to people, you know? And so overcoming objections, what I'm getting at here, I'm giving you some backstory on me, because back in the day, overcoming objections was like a, um, a formula to us. It was really um, like a holy. I'm not going to lie. Um, and it was basically about trying to turn people around on themselves. And I'm not saying fitness versus like that now. I don't really know. But 15 years ago, you know, that's what we were told. You know, I was told Sky you used to be an actor. Use your acting um, abilities to, you know, like affect these clients and stuff like that and that was actually the point that I left because I went I don't want to hurt people in this way this doesn't feel right to me um, so overcoming objections why I say that is a whole other thing of its own is that because we can get into people's heads again that sounds really weird we can get into people's heads and their hearts and their souls and their desires um, and it being such a personal thing that we want to help people with um, without having to be an a-hole all right, it's that simple, all right? And that's why I say that overcoming objections is another conversation for another day because there are a whole bunch of standard kind of ones. Um, and it is about just making sure um, that people aren't being fear-driven, all right? That's kind of number one. Make sure that they're not actually, um, you know, building their answer or, or you know, putting this action, uh, excuse me, this objection forward based on um, a fear-driven thing. Um, or, you know, maybe um, sometimes, uh, the ability to change gets in people's way as well, all right? Change is a scary thing. So we go, oh, okay, I'm going to have to come here and I'm going to have to come all the time and, and you know, you're going to want to change me and then I'm going to have to back myself and, you know what, I'm just going to think about it. All right, I'm just going to, like, I'm just going to think about it. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> like, you've either not maybe built the desire and the, the value up enough um, or it's, it's just a knee-jerk reaction that we all kind of have when change is put in front of us, all right? We need to integrate the change sometimes, okay? So again, we'll have that overcoming objections conversation another time. And then the final most important point uh, when it comes to um, the, the ultimate sales um, blueprint and sales process is obviously closing the sale. Again, that's another you know masculine way of putting it. Um, but all that means is ask for it ask for the sale don't be scared to sort of say cool no worries so shall we get you started 
don't talk yourself out of the sale. I think that's one of the things that also happens um, quite regularly is sometimes people can talk themselves out of the sale. Oh, cool, like, do you need to think about it or do you need to talk to your partner? And they start, like, us as the salesperson or us as the business owner or us as the, you know, service provider can sometimes start throwing objections at the person. And it's like, that's crazy. You know, you don't want to start throwing, you don't want to start giving them objections to, so they go, yeah, cool. Actually, no, you might, you might be right. I do want to talk to my partner about it. Yeah. Okay. Actually, no, I don't really have the time or, you know, anything like that. Okay. So it's really important that you ask for the sale. That's, there's nothing wrong in doing that and saying, cool, no worries. Shall we get you started? Like you're totally pumped and I'd really love to, you know, I can have you in tomorrow doing your PT session at this exact same time. How does that suit you? Super simple, right? Now I want to give you some lowdown. So, um, let me just recap that quickly establishing rapport all right we want to find the need once we've found the need we're going to build the value once we've built the value we're creating the desire for the person where they're going to we're then going to um, overcome the objections um, and then we're going to close the sale and all close the sale means is you're just going to ask for it so shall we get you started you know do you have any further questions or shall we get you started and if they have any further questions cool let them ask questions there's no problem with that either all right, so let me tell you about today. I wrote down some notes on my little notepad here because I wanted to make sure I gave you some really um, uh, cool, interesting tips. Let's quickly talk about maybe what not what didn't go so well this morning in terms of those points, those six points I've just given you. All right, if that is our structure, if that is our, our understanding of the sales kind of process, um, selling without selling, selling with heart, being genuine, all of those things still count. That doesn't mean we can't have a structure to how we're going to put a sale forward. And once it's kind of structured and it's always a bit the same um, in terms of the structure, you know, you just... You put your own flavor on it. I probably swear all the time during sales processes and stuff like that. Or I, you know, I'll make a joke or I'll do this or that. Or you tell your own story, whatever it is, you make it yours. Okay. Then it's not tacky or programmed, if that makes sense. Okay. So what didn't go well this morning, bless her. Um, she didn't really build rapport to begin with. And um, so that was really odd because she kind of came at me with all of this like energy and, and like, <laughs> and, um, and was very ready to kind of sell, which I think is maybe what I was sort of going, wow, I can't, not attitude. There wasn't asshole attitude. It was something though. It was something. There was, it was a tone. Um, and I'm generally pretty good at reading people. And so this tone was odd to me. Um, bless her. Anyway, so she didn't build rapport. All right. We sat down. She sort of said, okay, cool. Asked me a couple of questions. Didn't say anything about my questions. Um, and then handed me four pages um, of a form to fill in. The answer is yes, I took photos of that form. So at some point in time, I will have a, um, a, a reference guide for you um, there. Um, so I spilled in this four page form. When I finished filled, filling in the four page form, she came back. Now, some of the questions were really great on there. It was all about the, um, you know, where, where, um, where am I now? Where do I want to be? What's been getting in my way? Do I have, you know, support around me? Like all these different things. Lots of really like juicy information. I've poured my heart out. And as well as, you know, uh, the same as we know, there was a pre-exercise questionnaire on there. Now, I'm a high risk clientele. Um, I make it, you know, um, uh, I make no secret that I have multiple sclerosis, right? That's totally fine. But technically, I'm a high-risk clientele for a gym, you know? So it's important to actually look at the form that says that and see that there. And although, no, I'm not about to fall off a bike and I don't need to worry that I'm going to pass out on the ground or anything along those lines, there's some juicy information in those four pages, right? Excuse me for one moment. Ah. Huh. Okay. So you'd think if I've just sat there and spent the time filling in four pages of questions and information, juicy, juicy life stuff, um, she might take a glance. And unfortunately she didn't. So not only did we kind of not build much rapport, I then filled in the form, right? So which would have been all the, um, uh, excuse me, all the finding the need kind of stuff. Um, but then, you know, when we went on our tour, which was the next part, we, she didn't build the value. Not really, you know, and I'm an easy sell. I walked into that gym knowing that I was just checking it out so that I could sign up. All right. But I thought, let's go through the sales process anyway, because I wanted to bring you a video. Now, 
no building rapport, doesn't even glance at my um, at my four page form. I'm like, why did I just fill in four pages? I just sat here for, you know, like 10 minutes doing this form um, and whatever, pouring my my life out onto this sheet and, and she didn't even take the time to look at it. And I was like, okay, interesting. So then as we're walking around and we're doing the tour of the gym and stuff like that, nothing was then individualized, all right? And I'm not, um, again, I'm not um, shutting this poor girl down, bless her. Um, it's just to show you these key, these six key things in stages when it when it comes to um, you know the sort of ultimate selling um, blueprint how important they are because when we then wandered wandered the gym um, because we hadn't built rapport I was a bit standoffish because it was a little bit odd um, because she didn't find the need she didn't read my form even though all the information was right there she then didn't build the value because nothing was actually tailored to my needs because she didn't know what they were you know, I've actually been in gyms before. Um, as I said to you, I love, I love, you know, gym swapping and bouncing around and stuff like that. And I've actually um, been in a gym before um, where they talked to me about weight loss the entire time. And I found that mildly offensive at that time because weight loss wasn't one of my goals. They just kind of assumed it was because I'm a female of about 30 something, you know, and so talk to me, you know, about losing weight the whole, whole time, even though that wasn't why I was at that gym or, you know, or, or anything relevant to me. So you can see again, why, why understanding the need and then building the value. And then maybe, you know, if she knew that I was um, interested in particular things, if I was interested in group fitness, if I was interested in boot camp, was I interested in training myself with the Olympic bars? Was I interested in, you know, whatever it is, then as we're getting to those sections, she can make, you know, a little bit more effort around them, um, which helps to build that value, um, you know, and and um, desire, you know, building the desire in me because I'm like, oh, cool, ticking all these boxes that are really interesting to me. That's fantastic. All right. So that was a bit weird. The tour didn't individualize it and then the other didn't, didn't individualize it. Excuse me. And then um, uh, and then the last thing actually while we were on tour was she kept shuffling me along. So I'm literally looking at something and she'd already half walked off. She'd gone, this is the thing, this is the that, blah, blah, blah. And then she's gone. And I'm like, I'm literally reading the wall. Like you're telling me about the, I'm like, what? Cause I still, there was, it was um, very busy gym in terms of like um, stuff around. They had lots of signage for lots of different things they've got going on particular new classes they had there's like a salon in there there's like you know all these different things and so you know we're sort of I'm being shown these areas and then at the same time um she was kind of shuffling along so you know rather than maybe standing there with me and maybe feeling the energy and seeing you know oh, I'm paying a little more attention to this particular thing maybe I should you know talk maybe she should have been talking to me a little bit more about that Alrighty, so Again, you can see building rapport, having an understanding of your client. You can see how important that is. Um, uh, finding the need, you know, what is is that they're after. Um, building the value around that need, you know. Um, so talking to me more about some of the things that I was interested in based on the four-page form that I had filled in, <laughs> right, which only builds my desire. Um, then also today, um, you know, uh, overcoming objections. I was just texting my partner. Um, I was just like, give me a minute. You I'm just going to text my partner because I just wanted to confirm that um, he wasn't going to be getting a membership at another gym first or, the, you know, whatever. So it wasn't, you know, whatever. I was just like, oh, give me a minute. I just want to text my partner and check something with him. Uh, she was good and she, you know, allowed all of that. That was not a drama um, kind of thing. Um, and then closed, asked for the sale. Uh, now, one last thing, actually, that I thought was a bit funny, um, both on their form and also she didn't ask me. She didn't ask me what I do for a living. You know, and I kind of think that's a bit interesting, you know, because it was good for today because it definitely gave me a different feel um, for the process. You know, I was there to go through the process. It's been a while since I've let a gym, um, I suppose, sell to me, if that makes sense. I normally walk in and go, hello, this is who I am. I don't need you to get to go through the same process. You know, I was once a sales consultant too. Tell me the pricing. I've probably already signed up in my brain. Don't even worry about it. All right. That's probably me normally. Um but yeah, she didn't ask me and it wasn't on the form either. Like I, I, you know, a lot of gyms that I've worked at, we would have, you know, what do you do for a living or how many hours you, you know, cause it's interesting information. It's good to know, um, to learn about the client as well as what would I have said? I'm a business mentor for the fitness industry and I'm a nutritionist. 
you know, I think that would have changed the uh, the whole sales process, don't you? When we're talking about, you know, seeing the in-house dietitian or maybe, you know, doing particular classes or getting shown how to use the machines um, because it's compulsory for me to go in for a 30 minute, you know, this is how you use a machine kind of thing because it could be different to some of the other gyms I've been at. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I found that really interesting. Now, what did she do well, all right? So in terms of our establishing rapport, finding the need, building the value, creating the desire, um, overcoming objections and closings, this is what she did well. She did answer all of my questions. Um, being who I am, obviously I'm gonna have lots of questions and stuff like that, and because we were going through the process and I was generally already ready to sign up in my brain, I just kinda, I, you know, I did actually not know what the, the cost of the gym was. Um, uh, and you know, so I'm, I was interested in the things around and obviously the things that related to, to me. So she did that pretty well. She answered the questions that I had when I asked them. All right. Um, but she probably could have answered some of those, um, excuse me, um, like impromptuly. Is that a word? Sure. Why not? If she had have understood my need, I probably didn't, wouldn't have even had to ask the question because she probably could have already tailored the wonder around to suit me. And again, Sure, this is a gym, but this works even if you're at the park. This works if you train out of your garage. This works, you know, across the board. It's just about finding out what the person, you know, where they are now, what's holding them back, where they want to be, you know, and how it is that your service is then going to be able to help them and relate that back to them. All right, it's that simple. Um, so she did do that well. She did answer my questions when I asked them, um, including the fact that there were some answers that she didn't know and she was very... Um, uh, very good and comfortable and, and quite polite when she was like, oh God, you know, I'm not entirely sure, but I will just go find out for you. So she did go off and find out the, um, uh, the information. I, I always pay that. I think that's really important. Um, you know, cause I have, I have no issue in somebody saying, I, look, I, I actually don't know the answer to that question, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out for you. And we should be all saying that in our businesses. All right. So if you're a trainer and somebody asks you a question about nutrition, you know, you don't have to flounder through it and maybe tell them what maybe Jenny down the street told you because she tried that diet that one time and you can just go, yeah, look, actually, um, that one's not been on my radar, but what I can do is I can talk to a nutritionist friend of mine. I'm going to come back to you tomorrow with a bit more of an answer. That's really great because clients are going to turn around and say, oh my goodness, they really care. How fantastic is that, right? So... Um, that's really important too, being able to answer questions. And if you don't know how to answer a question, you know, say, look, I don't actually know, but I'm going to find out for you and go find out. Perfect. So she did that really well. Um, she gave me a moment to think about it. As I said, um, she gave me lots of options, but not confusing options. So that's really good as well. Obviously this being um, a bigger gym, they have their, they have their options. Their options are in place. They are what they are. It's that simple. You know, this amount of contract, that amount of contract, you know, this add on or month by month. That's it, <laughs> all right? So that's really good. What I find sometimes when we have our own PT businesses is we have like 30 different options because we want to make sure that the 10 pass person can have their 10 pass. We've got our fun, you know, our foundation prices for people who joined us originally. We've then moved places and we changed our price again. But then also Jenny from down the street can't really afford that. So I changed the pricing for Jenny, but then I've got people on direct debits, but then some people don't really pay the direct debits. And then I've got a 10 pass, but that's, you know, only meant to run for three months, except I always let people use it for six or more or however long they need a confused customer never buys all right so we don't want to have or they also don't value the product or the service you know so we really want to be clear on our offerings um uh and and we don't want to confuse people in the sales process because if you're like i've got this and i've got that and we've got all these different options you know when you're presenting um because obviously you know create the desire present present is in there as well all right present the the um uh, you know, the information around the sale, the pricing structure, the opportunity, whatever it might be, all right, the program. Um, so yeah, look, she didn't confuse me with options, which was amazing. I picked the one that was appropriate to me. Uh, let me see. She showed me understanding at the end. So this was really important too, um, because obviously I said, hey, listen, I'm more than happy to sign up to a contract. However, you know, being a high risk clientele, what it can mean sometimes, and she didn't know any of this because she didn't look at my form at the time, but I said, look, I've got MS. Um, and what that means is, you know, probably once a year, I need to literally take six weeks off. Like, I don't know when it'll happen. I'll have to put my membership on hold. It's just, you know, um, 
luck of the draw kind of thing whenever it's going to be so do you have a process around um obviously putting your memberships on hold is that really easy and all the rest of it and once um she found that out she actually um it was actually quite disarming for her i found which is a good thing you know because she went like and not patronizingly so so but she was like oh my goodness okay cool yeah look that does actually change a few of the things that i was saying to you i totally understand let me get you slightly different information on that i want to make sure that you know you can put your membership on hold but don't worry and you know i'll get some of that um in writing for you because i want to you know uh because I, i asked for that as well i was like can you let me know that I can put my membership on hold for two months if I need to, even though I'm on a contract um, and whatever, you know? So she was really understanding. It was actually quite endearing, um, her not being patronizing, not that she would be, but, um, uh, and and um, and disarming. Cause she was like, oh God, you know, like I probably should have known that if I had read the form, it was a bit like that. Um, and so that, but that was endearing for her at the end. So she did that well. And the last thing she did well actually, or well and not well, as we've already discussed, at the end, she did in fact ask me, you know, so. So like you're here, it's the middle of the day. What do you do for a living? Do you have the day off work or something like that? And I said, well, actually, I'm a personal training business mentor and I'm a nutritionist. And she went, <gasps> like, and then kind of went, that's so cool. Like I'm actually doing my PT and I'm not one at the moment, but I'm going to be studying again next year. And then I'm studying right now, but I'm doing something different. And I'm like, cool, who are you studying through? And so then she's telling me, and then she's like, right, you know, next year I'm going to have my own business. And this is the plan and blah, 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 like all of this sort of stuff, you know, it was like building rapport except at the end, <laughs> you know? So I thought like I was, I appreciated her openness and her willingness and our conversation at the end there. Um, it was very lovely and nice, you know, um, to have that conversation, but that kind of stuff as well, you know, as I said, it would have changed the entire structure of, of the, the today, you know, if she had have asked a simple question like, you know, what do you do for a living? Or you're, you're off from work today or what do you do? And blah, 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 that kind of a thing, maybe at the beginning. So look, they're my six kind of slash seven um, uh, tips to ultimate uh, sales blueprint. Um, and, you know, what went well today and what um, didn't go so well. So have a bit of a think about how you take people through the sales process. I'm going to, um, as I said, you know, you saw me looking down. As I said to you, I wanted to make sure I cover everything. Um, I'm going to um, post that picture for you so that you can find some structure around your um, sales process. All right, because it's important. Yes, we want to be a bit fluid, all right? Like you don't want to be a, a, I don't know, you don't want to program. I totally, you know, I'm not saying that. It's good to have a structure to follow and then you throw in your inflections and then you throw in your um, uh, your personality and your humanness and like I said, some of your journey and you relate back to people and you ask them questions because you give a shit about them and you want some understanding of their life and what's important to them because people are really fucking interesting, right? Um, and so that's super important, okay, that you put all your own inflections on there, but that doesn't mean that we can't have a particular process. It's not dirty selling or anything to have structure to it, because remember, I bet you're all amazing trainers, which means you can definitely, 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 definitely help people and change their life just by getting their foot in the door. So if you know that, have confidence in your services, have confidence in your abilities, have confidence in your business, um, you know, to and have confidence in the sales process process to help structure, um, you know, being able to draw more people in more of your ideal clientele so that you can help more people. All right. Um, now I did say to you that, um, that I was going to tell you about an awesome opportunity that I've got coming up. That's actually, um, only been, um, available to my VIP community. Um, so some of you might know, you know, I do, um, nutrition and lifestyle packages, social media content and, and all sorts of different things, um, for fitness businesses so that you can run really impactful challenges, um, and, and have amplified, uh, client offerings, um, and so uh, for my VIPs, you know, who are, who are in um, uh, my VIP group um, that, that have these packages, what I've been offering them at the moment um, is the opportunity uh, to apply um, for a, um, a business mentoring program that I'm running um, that's actually coming up uh, in the next sort of, gosh, couple of weeks. We're starting in a couple of weeks, which is really crazy. Um, it's called uh, the, I'm going to forget its name. Doesn't even matter, does it? So it's a business mentoring program for PTs um, in terms of uh, challenge uh, and running, you know, really impactful challenges. Um, and so I'm going to be helping, um, you know, uh, the, the PTs who um, apply for this opportunity 
community and are accepted um, into it. I'm going to put everyone in a really amazing um, group and community um, where we're going to learn everything you need to know. So if you've enjoyed today, you know, we're going to be doing stuff like this on steroids. All right. So it's going to be everything from how to run impactful challenges, um, the sales process, how to set your business up for success, you know, niching and and um, and branding and, and all those different things um, that sometimes, you know, get forgotten when we're so busy working in our businesses and, you know, and teaching all the exercise and having, you know, booking appointments and stuff like that, that we sometimes need to take that step back and go, hey, you know what, I want to, um, I want to attract more of my ideal clientele or I need to make some more money or I want to work less hours or whatever else it might be. This entire mentor program, um, uh, is governed towards you, all right, if if that's what you're after. So again, as I said, if you've enjoyed today, um, you know, it's going to be this kind of stuff on steroids um, over many weeks um, where you get, you know, lots of one-on-one -on -one time with me. Um, so what I want you to do is if you're interested in um, finding out some more information and having a bit of, a, uh, um, you know, having a bit of a conversation with me, um, just write in the comments box, you know, hell yes. <laughs> and, if, um, and if you're interested, um, you know, and you've written hell yes, uh, you know, at, at the bottom of this, um, this video, um, then, you know, I'll PM you uh, with some more details on how you can apply for that amazing opportunity. All right. Thanks for today, guys. Hope you really enjoyed this video. You know, hit um, hit like if you have. Um, it's great to have had so many of you here um, and, you know, plenty of people watching it back, I'm sure, too. Um, and again, you know, um, let me know if you're interested in, um, in finding out a bit more and applying for that awesome opportunity um, for the um, Personal Training Mentor um, program um, that's going to help you run impactful challenges and amplify all of your business offerings. All right, guys. Love you. Bye.